Hi, I'm Helen Johnson, and I've been threatening to come on and introduce myself for so long that I'm sure that Paul had given up hope I'd ever actually do it. So my business is called Remix Marketing, and I specialize in Facebook and Instagram advertising. So today I'm going to take you through my website to explain a little bit more about the services that I offer and a few freebies that are there if you would like to download them. And then I'm going to take you through a few hints and tips if you're considering running Facebook ads for your business or if you're creating an ad, some things that you should be thinking about. So I'm going to share my screen. Bear with me. OK. So first of all, looking at the website. So the whole ethos of my business is really around taking the fear out of digital marketing for my clients and helping them to grow their sales using Facebook and Instagram ads. Um, if you choose to work with me, you'll find that I'm really straight talking. I'm going to be really honest with you. If I don't think ads are going to work for you, I'm going to tell you that it's not a way that you should be spending your money. If I think there are things that you could be spending it on that would be more effective for you, certainly before you start running ads. So things like maybe improving your website or implementing an email system, that kind of thing. I'm going to tell you that as well, because I don't, I know that all businesses have limited resources and there's no point in you spending money on something that's not going to work for you. It's only going to frustrate you. And from my point of view, it would really upset me. I wouldn't like enjoy doing it, so I'm not going to. So just to give you a little bit of a feel about the sorts of services that I offer. So for Facebook and Instagram advertising, if you want the peace of mind of having an expert run your ads or you just haven't got enough time, then I offer full campaign management. So that's literally everything from creating the copy, the images, um, the ads themselves, and then putting up on the platform and monitoring how they're doing and optimizing them so that you're getting the best return for your money. If you would prefer to run ads yourself, and it doesn't really matter what uh, sector you're in either, I can provide power hours and training sessions that teach you what you would need to do, both from a technical point of view, but also how to create an ad, the sorts of things that are gonna work better than others, and what are the things that you should have in place to back up the ad so that you're gonna get the best return for your money. Um, I also offer advertising audits. So if you're running Google ads or Google shopping or Facebook and Instagram ads in the past, then I can look through your accounts and identify where things are working for you and where things could be improved so that you can either save the money that isn't converting for you or invest it in things that are gonna work better. And then the final thing that I offer is um, Facebook and Instagram advertising strategy. So if you know which buttons to press within the system, but you're not as clear on what's going to get you the best return for the money that you've got to invest, then I can create a strategy for you that you can then go ahead and execute. So they're the main services that I offer. And if you want more information on them, you can just pop into the working together section of the website and there's a bit more information on each of them there. So in terms of me, I'll give you a little bit of background about me, which is in the My Story section. So I've been working in marketing for over 30 years, primarily in product marketing and mostly for companies. Uh, about 18 months ago, I started working in the charity sector. So I spent some time at Face for Life, um, marketing their events in Scotland, the Northeast and Northern Ireland. And then I worked with a startup charity called Made by Sport. And you can see me here on the stage at Glasgow Race for Life. Um, and then last year, when COVID struck, I was furloughed and I decided that I was going to set up a business and work for myself, which I'd thought about a while ago, but hadn't got around to doing. So I retrained in Facebook ads and I've studied with a couple of really well-known Facebook marketeers. And I also did a postgrad uh, MBA in marketing with Mark Ritson just to keep my marketing knowledge up to date. And that's one of the other things if you do choose to work with me, I'm really big on learning. I generally dedicate a day a week to keeping abreast of what's happening in marketing generally, and in particular in the Facebook advertising space, which is changing an awful lot at the moment with things like the ISO 14.5 update from Apple and various other privacy things that are going to affect the way audiences are built and how effective ads can be and how you're going to track them going forward. So in terms of things that are on the website that you may be interested in, there are some free guides. 
So there's a three, three guides and that you can just download. The first one is really, if you're thinking about doing Facebook or Instagram advertising, um, really giving you a few pointers as to whether they're likely to be a good choice for your business or not, things that you should consider before you invest. The next one is 10 cost-effective ways to get to know your customer. And this is really giving you some hints and tips on ways to do market research. That's not gonna cost you a lot of money, but it's really, really important because one of the things that's gonna make your business succeed is understanding um, your customer and their needs and really tailoring all your marketing around their needs rather than what you want to sell. And then the final thing that's on there is a five ways to get more sales through your online shop. This is really just uh, giving you a few hints and tips and around the best practices if you want to get a good return on your ads if you're running through ads for an e-com shop. So they're all there and they're all free. So pop along to the website if you'd like to download them. And then the other thing that's on the website is a number of blogs. So most of these are around Facebook ads. And again, there are things to help you be more effective with Facebook ads if you're running them yourself. But then there's also some things around website and marketing generally um, and lots of other themes in that area. So if you fancy learning a bit more, again, this is all free information for you to go and have a look at, just pop along to the website. So that's a really what's on the website other than the contact information. Um, as I said, if you want more detail about the services, then please pop onto the working together section and have a look in there. Right, and now know from, I've already tried this recording once and I failed at this stage, so I'm gonna stop sharing and then I need to start sharing again to take you through to the presentation on the Facebook ads. Which I'll just put into slideshow mode. It's getting there. Okay. So then I can take you through a few hints and tips about ads as I, as I said I would. So first of all, Facebook ads are great for some businesses and they don't work so well for others. So here are five things that you should be thinking about before you start running Facebook ads. And I'll give you a bit of a feel for whether they're likely to be right for you or not. So the first thing is how easy is Facebook gonna make it for you? So the key difference between ads and posting organically on Facebook is Facebook gets to choose exactly which ads are allowed to go live. It can vet all of your copy and anything that it doesn't feel comfortable with, you don't get to post. So in terms of, it has some product categories that it likes a lot, some categories that are completely banned and some categories that fit in the middle bit of those two. So for instance, you cannot sell live animals or guns, surprisingly, they're completely banned categories. Um, a lot of the e-commerce would fit into the things that Facebook's quite happy with. So things like fashion, um, a lot of food products, giftware, all of those sorts of things. They're generally quite easy if you want to do ads for them. But sat in the middle, there are things like financials products, anything that's um, saying it's going to help you earn more money. Then there's things like health products where you might be claiming certain benefits for the product. And if you can't substantiate the claims that you're making, then your ad's never going to be approved. And then things like weight loss, for instance. So Facebook doesn't ever want anyone to feel bad about themselves on the platform. They want them to feel happy and they want them to stay there. So anything that's going to put them on a bit of a downer, they don't want there. So on a weight loss uh, product, for instance, you're never allowed to show a before and after shot because the before shot will make people feel bad about themselves if they think that's what they look like. So you just have to think a little bit more carefully if you're in those sorts of categories because what it's potentially gonna be harder for you to get ads to approve, be approved. And you might have a few iterations before they're allowed to go ahead. Next thing to have a think about is, can you stop, create a scroll stopping image, whatever it is that you're trying to sell or promote? So when you're on Facebook, you're there to see what your friends are up to. You're quite relaxed, you're there to socialize. You might be in a group around hobbies, that kind of thing. Um, and really and truly you're not there to shop. So you're having to stop them in their tracks basically with your ad for them to even consider the thing that you want them to do. And if you've got a really dry product, 
it may well be that you're really going to struggle to create an image that's going to have impact. And if it doesn't have impact, the ad will fail. So if your product is just not that sort of product, then it's probably not the right channel for you to be on. The next thing to have a look at is how much have you got to spend? So it's not all about the money, but it is partly about the money. So Facebook ads are an auction. So anyone who wants the space is basically bidding against each other and the highest bidder, there's a couple of other factors in there as well, is the one that's gonna get the space. So if you've got a very tiny budget, so if you're trying to spend two or three pounds a day, you're really gonna to struggle to make an impact. So it, I would normally say to people, if they're thinking about Facebook ads and the minimum budget they should think about is 10 pounds a day and the minimum period they should run that for is 10 days. Because when you put an ad up in the beginning, it's not gonna perform as well as it potentially could. It's gonna take a little bit of time for the Facebook's algorithm to work out who to show the ad to, who's gonna complete the action that you want. So you do have to make a little bit of an investment and you do have to to put the ad up and leave it for a few days without changing anything as that so that Facebook can learn what's going to happen and refine how it's distributing your ad based on what it sees. The next thing to think about is what it is that you're trying to achieve and whether that's really reasonable or not. So if you're selling a product, um, say a t-shirt maybe, um, it's going to retail 20, 25 pounds. Maybe that's going to work really well. One ad is probably all it's going to take to take people through to your website and maybe convert. Whereas if you're trying to sell a thousand pound coaching course, one ad is never going to convert for you into a sale. It's really going to be like the first step in the process because it's something that's a high value item. People are going to need to consider whether they're going to make the purchase. They need to going to build a level of trust with you before they're going to make that sort of investment. So you just have to be realistic about what within the process your Facebook ad is, is going to do. And a lot of the time, the Facebook ad is the thing that's going to introduce people to your product and start them on the journey. And you're going to convert them further down the line, maybe with a phone call or maybe um, with an email sequence. Potentially the final action may be on your website but there's probably gonna be a number of different touch points in the middle of that before you're gonna see the end result if you're a high ticket product. Um, and then the next thing to think about is whether you're set up technically to be able to run ads effectively. So a few things around this. So for instance, have you got a Facebook pixel on your website, which is a little bit of code that enables Facebook to see what people are doing when they land on the website. Have you got your domain verified with Facebook? Have you selected the events that you want Facebook to track? All of those sorts of things really need to be in place if you're gonna get the best results from Facebook ads. And I would normally say to people, don't run ads if you don't have a pixel in place, because it, if you don't have a pixel, all Facebook can see is what the person did on Facebook. So you might click a link to go and see a website, but after that, did you bounce straight off? Did you have a good look around? Did you finally make a purchase? All of those things Facebook really wants to be able to see because it can then look for more people like the ones that completed the action that you wanted rather than just being able to see these people all went to the website and not knowing what happened after they got there. So there are sort of five basic things that you should be thinking about. And as I said, they're not right for everybody. So do be honest with yourself. There might be better ways that you could spend your money. And then the next thing to think about is the actual ad itself and six tips here to look at how to create an ad that's going to perform well for you. So the first thing to think about and really very important if you get this wrong, it doesn't matter what else you do, the ad will fail. So you need to create an offer that is going to be really resonate with your audience. It needs to be something that's going to have really broad appeal and it's going to be for that target audience. And it is all about them and their needs. It's not about you and what you're trying to sell. So you really need to sort of look at it from their perspective. What is it that's gonna, about your product that's gonna make their life better or is gonna make them feel good? Because that's what's gonna create the emotional hook that's gonna 
be the thing that initially engages them and makes them start to think about you as a potential supplier. So in terms of product-based businesses, and I said I generally work with design-related businesses, you have what you should always remember, and this is true for all ads to be fair, most of your ads will be shown to people who've never had any interaction with your brand. So you're very often better to look at something that's already a bestseller for you and promote that rather than promote something that's brand new. Because to a person who doesn't know your brand, everything is new. And the things that are bestsellers are known to be commercially successful, whereas something that's new may or may not be successful. It could be a complete failure, even with your existing customers. So in general, for certainly for product-based businesses, I recommend looking at bestsellers as part of the mix. And it's not that you can't include new items as well, but bestsellers are normally a, a pretty sure fire bet. The next thing to look at is picking the right objective and optimization. So when you create an ad in Facebook, there's kind of two levels of um, targets, I guess, that you're giving Facebook in terms of what you want the ad to achieve. And you really need to be clear with yourself before you start creating the ad as to what those are. But if you've ever created an ad, you'll recognize this screen. And in general, the items in the right hand column are the things that are people are highly likely to complete a specific action um, if they are if you pick an objective in this column. So it's likely to be a sale or a lead or something pretty far down the sales journey. And um, the middle column is really things that are not at the final stage of the customer journey, unless you're going for engagement and you're potentially looking at page likes. And then the left hand column is really everyone that's left, because Facebook will look at an audience that you give it and it will segment them into all of these different groups. And what's left goes into reach. So Facebook's not really expecting people within the reach group to complete an action. So if you're looking for sales, and let's face it, most people who are creating a Facebook ad are, then you probably should be at least trying a conversion objective if you've got a pixel in place. And if it's for a sale, you'd be doing conversion for purchase. If it's for a lead, conversion for lead. But you're being really, really clear with Facebook if you do that, what it is you want, and that's what you're asking Facebook for. Because if you create a traffic campaign and you really want sales, what you've actually asked Facebook to do is find people for me who like clicking links and looking at websites, not Facebook find people for me who are likely to put my product in the basket and then make the payment. So just be really, really careful about what it is you choose. Next thing to look at is picking the right audience. So there's three ways to create audiences on Facebook and just quickly take you through those. So the first one is a custom audience. Now, custom audience is someone who has already interacted with your brand. So you can build custom audiences from things like people who have visited your website, people who've purchased something from your website, people who've been for a specific page, for instance. You can create people for who are audiences from people who've interacted with your Facebook page or your Instagram page. And you can do things like upload your email list if you've got GDPR consent and Facebook can build an audience off those people. So the custom audiences um, are highly effective audiences, but they tend to be very small. So in advertising terms, they tend to be used quite sparingly, unless you're a very big brand and you have huge audiences. Um, sorry. I didn't mean to go there just yet. So the next one is lookalike audiences. So a lookalike audience is an audience that is based on a custom audience, but you're asking Facebook to find people who are similar to the people in your custom audience. So you might ask it to create a 1% lookalike of people who have purchased in the past from your website. And it will look at the profile of the people who have purchased and then looking at other people who use the platform try and find another 450 odd thousand who look similar from the machine's perspective. And Facebook have got an awful lot of data on all of us. So lookalike audiences do tend to be pretty effective, although some of the changes in tracking permissions that are currently happening are making them a little bit less than they used to be. And then the final type of audience is a saved audience. 
which is an audience that you create uh, based around the interests of your ideal customers. So you really are looking into some depth around these customers, their interests, um, and particularly what would interest them and not interest other people. So a couple of recommendations on audiences for you. So Facebook generally like quite a big audience. Uh, generally, I'm looking at at least one and a half million when I'm pulling an audience together. But if you're doing a local campaign, you might find that you've only got 10,000 in your audience or a couple of hundred thousand. But so with those audiences, I would generally not narrow them down. I would just use the location and I'd either drop a pin and say within a 10 mile radius of the pin or I'm using specific postcodes. But for them, I'm going to use my ad copy and my creative to call out who within that audience the ad is relevant to rather than putting interests in and really narrowing it down because then Facebook's really going to struggle to find the people that you want and um, so it's going to be more expensive for you. But if I was running a national campaign and I've got a limited budget I would generally run two audiences uh, as my starting point so I'd start with a one to three percent look-alike audience based on the best quality data that I have available so if I've got purchases on my website I'd probably build a lookalike based on past purchases. If I am just starting as a new business and I've only got an Instagram page, then I would use an audience based on people who've interacted with my Instagram page. And then as I get more sales, I can then refine my lookalike into something that's a little bit more transactional. And then the second type of audience that I would be using would be a saved audience. So as I said, they're built from the interests of your ideal customer. And you're really looking for something that is your, that would interest your ideal customer and no one else. And it's really a good tip to look for things that are quite obscure in this because they will be cheaper for you. And really stay away from broad term appeals, things like Pandora. And the reason for that is, A, you're gonna get a huge audience. So it's gonna take Facebook a long time to narrow down who within that audience is relevant to you. But also, if it's a really common term, you're going to find that an awful lot of other advertisers are using it. So in terms of how much you have to bid to get your ad shown, it's going to be more. So again, it's going to be much less cost effective and something that's much more specific to your target customer. The next thing is your ad copy itself. So um, you need to build your copy around what's important to your target customer and to Facebook rather than yourself. So it's not about what you want to sell, it's in what way is this product or service going to improve the life of the person that it's targeted at? How is it going to make them feel better? And that's the sort of angle that you always need to come from. It's always about them and how are they going to feel better rather than me, 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 this is what I want to sell, this is what I'm going to tell you. Oops, sorry. And the other thing I was going to say to you about the copy, so as I said before, it's a social platform. I'm there to relax. I'm having chat with, com with my friends. I'm very conversational, maybe using emojis. So in terms of the way that you would write the copy, it needs to be in that sort of style. Anything that's really, really formal is, is not gonna work well because it's gonna jar with everything else that's on the platform. So you need to bear that in mind. You would you write a very different ad to use on Facebook to what you would use on something like LinkedIn, for instance because the person that you're targeting is in a particular frame of mind and they're not there to shop, they're there to relax. So you need to meet them where they're at in terms of their, their mindset. The next thing is the actual creative imagery that you're gonna use. Um, and it needs to be something that's simple and bold. And in general, um, I would use at least one single image. I'd normally test two different creatives, so I would always use a single image as one of those. And then I might use a video or a product carousel or a catalog or sorry, collection um, as my other, because I don't know which of those two is going to be more appealing to my audience. And the machine is going to be much better at working that out than I am. In terms of the actual style of the image, as I said, nothing too formal or posed. So a lot of the time you're better using things like selfies than you would be using a like professional photograph. So just bear that in mind in terms of what it looks like in the feed, because it look, it's going to work better if it looks like something that belongs in the feed 
rather than something that's just completely at odds with it. And then the final stage is the landing page. So in terms of for both Facebook and the person that you're targeting, Facebook ads only the starting point. The landing page is part of that journey and the landing page really needs to be a logical next step from the ad. So I'm expecting to see more information about the same type of thing. I'm expecting it to be a similar style in terms of the copy to what I've seen in the ad. Um, and from Facebook's point of view, all the rules that apply within the ad itself also apply to the landing page. So for instance, the before and after shot for weight loss, you couldn't have that on the landing page either. When Facebook decides whether your ad is gonna be allowed to go ahead or not, the bots don't just um, screen the ad copy. They also look at the landing page and they look at things like how fast the landing page loads. So if your landing page is taking more than three seconds to load, then your ad is not gonna feed out well because Facebook wants people to have a really good experience where they go off the platform as well as when they're on the platform because it reflects badly on them if they send people to somewhere that's unreliable and it's giving them a bad experience. So you really need to be mindful that all of it looks like it belongs together. It has the same sort of feel, it has the same sort of messaging. The landing page normally would just be a bit more of an elaboration on what's in the ad and also it would look to be where the conversion happens. So more specific calls to action than within the ad. So that's a few tips, which I hope you found useful. And these are my contact details. So my website, remixmarketing.co.uk. I'm on Facebook and Instagram at Remix Your Marketing. And uh, if you want to contact me by email, then I'm Helen at remixmarketing.co.uk. So I'm gonna stop the screen share. Um, I hope that you found this useful and uh, yep, finally done it. Feeling much better for getting this off my plate. Um, hope to meet some of you soon. If not, then um, have a good day. Bye.